everyone, the Why Nots are back. That's right, and today is a big day because we're talking about chemistry, química. La química es el estudio de la materia y cómo cambia. Matter, materia, is anything that has mass and takes up space. It basically makes up everything around us. So, everything you see, todo lo que ves, hear, smell, taste, touch, involves chemistry. That's big. It is big, but in order to talk about chemistry, we need to talk about things that are really, 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 really small. Atoms, atomos. You know what they say, you can never trust an atom. You know why? I'm afraid to ask. Because they make up everything. Okay, that was a pretty good one. And it's true. Everything around us and even things you can't see is made up of atoms. But not all atoms are the same. To organize and understand all the different types of atoms, we use a tool that looks like this. <laughs> now that's big. This is called the periodic table of elements. Esta tabla enumera 118 diferentes tipos de átomos. Se llaman elementos. Every element has characteristic physical and chemical properties that make it unique. These elements make up everything in the universe, from the stars that are billions of miles away, to rocks, water, the air around us, even soccer balls, milkshakes, gumballs, snow cone machines, game show hosts, broccoli. <laughs> okay, Joey, I think we get the point. Sorry, the point being is, all matter everywhere is made up of different types of atoms called elements organized on this, the periodic table. Atoms combine with one another to form molecules. Molecules can range from two atoms to thousands of atoms. One of the molecules we're most familiar with is water. Water is represented by the chemical formula H2O, meaning there's two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So, just how small is an atom? Really, 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 really! Hey, em Emma, I think we need to visualize this. You up for going into the simulator? Yeah, let's go. Come on, al simulador. Okay, in order to understand how small an atom is, let's first imagine shrinking you down to the size of a hair. You mean? Like this? Welcome to simulator fun. A typical human hair is about one-tenth a millimeter wide. That one-tenth of a millimeter is about as thick as one million carbon atoms. Wow, that's so many, it's hard to imagine. So atoms are incredibly small, but do you wanna know what's even more incredible? Atoms are actually made of three even smaller particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are located in the nucleus. Los protones y neutrones están en el núcleo. Protons have a positive charge and neutrons have no charge. The number of protons an atom has determines its identity or what element it is. This is called the element's atomic number. El número de protones de un átomo determina qué elemento y número atómico es. If you add together the number of protons and neutrons, you get that element's atomic mass. Outside the nucleus are the electrons, negatively charged particles with very little mass. The electrons zoom around really fast in the space we call the electron cloud. An atom is actually mostly empty space. Un átomo es en su mayor parte espacio vacío. Si fuera del tamaño de un campo de fútbol, if an atom was the size of a football field, then the nucleus, containing almost all of the atom's mass, would only be about the size of a marble. Now my mind is blown. I think we need a brain break. Me too. When we come back, we're gonna look more closely at some of the elements on the periodic table.
Hey everyone, we're back and it's time to set the table. Y ahora veremos la tabla periódica, why not style. This table sets the stage for how we understand the properties of elements and how they behave. Each element is represented by an atomic symbol, which is one or two letters. Some are easy to remember, like H is for hydrogen. Others are a bit trickier. K is for potassium and AU is gold. This is because many of the chemical symbols for the elements reflect the name of the element in a different language. The elements are organized in the periodic table by increasing atomic number. El espacio de cada elemento muestra información de sus propiedades físicas y químicas. The table is also arranged into periods and groups. La tabla se organiza también en periodos y grupos. The seven horizontal rows are called periods and the 18 vertical columns are called groups, or families. Los elementos de cada grupo tienen propiedades similares porque todos tienen el mismo número de electrones de valencia. And you may be asking, what are valence electrons? Well, for that, we'll need to take a closer look at a few elements in the same group. Right. So in these models of carbon, silicon, and germanium atoms, we can see the protons and neutrons in the nucleus. And we see electrons at different energy levels around the nucleus. The electrons in the outermost energy level are called valence electrons. Y vemos electrones en diferentes niveles de energía alrededor del núcleo. Los que se encuentran en el nivel de energía más externo se llaman electrones de valencia. Each of these three atoms have four valence electrons, meaning they behave in very similar ways. Therefore, they're in the same family. So, this drawing is like a family portrait. Uh. Anyway, let's look back at the periodic table. It's also organized into metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Los elementos también se organizan por metales, no metales, y metaloides. Metals are located left to the stair step. They have a shiny luster, are good conductors, and are malleable, or easily formed into different shapes. With the exception of hydrogen, nonmetals are located to the right of the stair step. They are dull, brittle, and are poor conductors. And metalloids are located along the stair step. They can have properties that are similar to both metals and nonmetals. Let's take a closer look. Carbon, atomic symbol C. I see the atomic number is six, so it has six protons. Carbon is a nonmetal, but more importantly, el cuerpo humano tiene un 18% de carbono. Carbon is also a key component of carbon dioxide, a molecule plants use to make food. So cool. Okay, let's move next door to nitrogen. Nitrógeno símbolo N y número atómico 7. Also to the right of the stair step, so a nonmetal. Nitrogen makes up 78% of our atmosphere. Y a temperatura ambiente es un gas. Well, we can't just get stuck here on this side of the periodic table. We still have so much more to see. Let's head over to hydrogen. Hidrógeno con símbolo H y número atómico 1. The lightest of all the elements, hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe. Roughly 75% of all known matter in the universe is hydrogen. In fact, stars, like our sun, are mostly hydrogen. Come on, let's check out silicon. Atomic number 14, silicon is on the stair step, so it's a metalloid. On a closer look, we'll see that silicon combines with oxygen to create silicon dioxide. That's the most abundant compound in Earth's crust, commonly found in sand or as quartz. There are lots of minerals here at the Pro Museum that contain silicon and oxygen. Next, I think we need some oxygen. Oxígeno. Oxígeno con símbolo O y número atómico 8. And as we look deeper, oxygen is everywhere. It's in the air that we breathe, and of course, when it gets together with hydrogen, we get water, which covers most of the Earth. We could go on all day. There's so much to learn and find out about all these elements. But I think it's time to meet a chemist. Let's do it. We're here with Dr. Tran, a chemist from the University of Toronto. Thank you so much for joining us today. You are a chemist, but you also call yourself a molecular architect. What does that mean? 
Well, as a chemist, what I'm doing is designing molecules, sort of like how an architect designs a building, right? So for instance, I make things that look like this, but I think about, okay, do I want this yellow piece here? Do I want this red piece here? And how do I design it in a way that it's flat, right? So a chemist sometimes is like an architect, but at the molecular level. Why are the molecules you design important and how might we use them in the future? Yeah, so I work on making electronics stretchable and soft. So look around you, you have your TV, your phone, your iPad, they're all really hard. But in the future, I think we're gonna make these electronics super soft and stretchable. So you can think about having electronic stickers on your skin. Imagine having a phone that when you drop, it doesn't break and have a new exit screen. We've learned about some really cool elements today. And I was wondering what elements you use in your work. Well, a very common element that I use is carbon. It's sort of everywhere, but it's really interesting from an architectural side because depending on how you connect the carbon, you can have very different materials, right? So the carbon in one way of connection is the lead in your pencil, but the same type of element in a, a different way is diamond, right? So I really like carbon as just designing the molecule of different shapes would give you different materials. ¿Cuál es su parte favorita de su trabajo? What is your favorite part of your job? My favorite part of the job is really working with younger students. So I teach and I run a research lab and part of my lab is uh, helping younger students figure out how to become chemists. So we talk and we think about ideas, of what molecule do we want to build? And then we sit down and brainstorm together and think about how are we going to put these building blocks together and what happens when we put 10 of these building blocks together. So that's really fun to sort of brainstorm with those ideas. Do you have any advice for kids like us who may want to be chemists someday? Yeah, I think as chemists, you should really feed your imagination, right? So in the future, what do you want? Do you want a material that can dissolve in salt water, a material that's soft that you can swallow? So as a chemist, you just need to be very imaginative. So once you learn all the tools, like what are the ways of connecting molecules and what sort of molecules can you connect, then it's really up to your imagination on how to build these new materials. Dr. Tran, thank you so much for joining us today. I feel really inspired about chemistry. Thank you, why not? And I feel inspired to do the Why Not Pop Quiz. Okay, Why Not Pop Quiz. What is chemistry? Chemistry is the study of matter. Matter is basically everything around us, and it is made up of atoms. La química es el estudio de la materia, y la materia es básicamente todo, y está hecha de átomos. So, what are the three particles that make up an atom? Protons and neutrons, which are found in the nucleus, and electrons, which are found in the electron cloud. Las tres partículas que forman un átomo son los protones y neutrones que están en el núcleo del átomo y los electrones que están en la nube de electrones. What is the periodic table of elements? The periodic table is a tool that helps us organize and understand the properties of the 118 known elements. La tabla periódica nos ayuda a entender y organizar a las propiedades de los 118 elementos. So, Emma, how is the periodic table arranged? Elements are listed by increasing atomic number. They are arranged into rows called periods and columns called groups or families. Elements in the same group have similar properties. What is a pirate's favorite element? Huh? Argon! Oh. I can't help it. I love chemistry puns. You could say I'm really in my element. Stop, oh. stop. La química es la llave a muchas carreras como la medicina o la ingeniería. Chemistry is the key to so many careers. From new fuels, to medicine, to fashion, to computers, you could create something that changes the world. I mean, why, Why not? not? <laughs> Porque no. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you again soon.